Art can mean different things to different people. For me, it's all about the joy of creating. So if you draw, paint, write, dance, sing, craft, play air guitar, or even sculpt using nothing but mashed potatoes, consider yourself an artist and join the conversation. For the next half hour, meet the artist, learn about their inspiration, and enjoy the beauty of creativity. Welcome to Art Talk with John Cole Artist. Well, good evening, everyone. It's John Cole, artist, and I want to say thank you so much for joining me tonight. And if you're not watching live, that's cool because um, this will be on uh, YouTube, Facebook, and all the major podcast networks after the fact. Now, tonight, I am very happy to welcome April Small onto the podcast. April is a local Massachusetts artist, and I think you're the first person other than my wife I've talked to that uh, is from the state. So that's awesome. Right. Um, but April is a creatively, uh, she's a certified creatively fit coach. She's a certified therapeutic art coach and she's a small business owner. Ona dot. Uh, let me make sure I get it right. This I'll make sure I get it right. It's you got this. Oh, Odinata. Odinata artistic services, April. Welcome. And thank you so much for joining me. How are you doing tonight? I'm so good. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, you're welcome. Um, I was hoping uh, you think you could take a couple minutes to introduce yourself to my audience. I'd appreciate that. Sure. I'm sure they would as well. Sure. So, well, my name is April Small. Obviously, I am a loving creative guide. I have dedicated the last 10 years of my life to um, both art and psychology and combining the two and trying to make people feel good through artistic expression and bringing communities together to get creative, especially. So a huge part of my business is doing paint classes, local, and I do travel and I do both public and private parties. And I do fundraiser events to raise for various causes, like even local sports teams, whatever it may be, however I can help. Um, and the other aspect of my business is taking life coaching and psychology um, mixture into the art realm and using art to help, you know, change the narrative in our minds. Because a lot of the time, you know, we get stuck as people and, and having things like power symbols or the crystal heart work and stuff that, um, that I do, it helps to reinforce positive change or behavior or vibration that you're kind of channeled into the life. Um, so I had the paint night business for so long and this last two years or so I've taken the spiritual path and kind of started combining that into my workshops too. So I'm doing kind of both and I'm a little all over the place, but I love it. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. That, that sounds like some exciting stuff. I know I look through your resume and, and folks, if you go online and we'll, we'll bring up your website or, or show the URL here, you know, later on in the show, but, um, yeah, you've got you've got some amazing work, and later on, I'm, I'm going to show some of your work with with our audience, those that are watching the video version of this. But um, yeah, you know, you 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 mentioned the the psych psychological piece of it, the bringing people together piece, um, which which has come up more than once on this program. You know, speaking with different artists, and I myself, you know, I've never considered myself like a spiritual person. However, there is a I would argue a legitimate spiritual aspect with creating uh, anything, right? Yeah. I mean, how grounding and rooting is it to create with your hands or your mind? And I think that people get stuck on, oh, I'm not creative. Mm. But that's crazy because we are literally all creative on a daily basis. You're creative when you pick out your morning outfit or decide what to cook for breakfast. That's creativity. It's simple creativity, but who said it had to be hard? Like. Oh right, you know, yeah. And you had to make a giant masterpiece of a painting to be called an artist. You're you're a life artist. You're creating your life every single day. Oh, I love that too. And that that's definitely the right mindset to have, right? Because it's all about mindset. I mean, life is a life is one mindset. It's either going to be a good one or a not good one, right? Um, definitely. And I would I, hope that most of us would tend towards the you know the the, the positive, the right? Well, that's that, what right? I want. I want to share as much light as possible because, like, I'm a very half person even like when things are bad I'm like well let me see what I can learn and then let's try again and do it better because 
And I think that's probably why I became an artist. I was always like, I kind of like to fix things or problem solve. And creativity mm. is just that. It's like taking things and kind of like smashing them up or whatever. <laughs> and then going, all right, now what can I make with, with the pieces that I took? You know, let's see what else we can make from it. And problem solving and cool stuff like that helps us feel good. It right. reinforces our self-confidence. That's why I think it's so important, especially like when it comes to people that are suffering from anxiety, depression, or even just stress, a way to de-stress and not think for a little while and maybe just brush pretty colors on a paper and not have to make anything in particular. But it's almost like, it's like meditation for the person that can't sit still. Right. And now Christine's on. She says, hello, beautiful souls. Hello. Yeah, the um so so I get all that. I think it's awesome, right? Um and I think that there is a large portion of the population that I think if they heard what you have to offer and were willing to sit down and do that would probably be very therapeutic. Um but I also think there's a portion of folks that like, and I think you said this, that, that just think it's too hard that maybe like myself, I'll be honest with you. I've got for whatever reason, this, this mindset, you know, to use that word that if I'm going to sit down and do a painting or something like that, it's got to be exactly the way I envision it. Right. It's got to be that way. So, so how do you respond to folks like that, that just think that, well, you know, it's easy for you to say April because, you know, you've got this beautiful light spirit and you want to do all these great things, but here I am, you know, I want to paint this perfect picture of a house and oh, it's just too hard to do it. I mean, how, how would you answer to, to somebody that, that has that issue? Well, the mindset? there's two ways to answer this and mm -hmm. it's, it's dependent on, do you live local to me or not? If you, <laughs> if you live local, come mm -hmm. to one of my classes and let me break down a painting step by step for you. Mm -hmm. And the more you come and see how I break down the paintings, because I don't just slap the paint on the canvas and expect you to follow along. I give you tips and tricks and I teach you the knowledge that I know so that if you wanted to go home and you can try something yourself, you'd be like, all right, well, at least I know I start with right. this or right. da, da, da. You might not learn everything in a single class because that's just not possible. They have to be small, you mm -hmm. know, and they have to be simple enough paintings that I can teach to a broad audience and that's with or without skill. So it's got to stay very neutral and in time. So like two hours after that, people start to get bored. But I teach you the basics in person, and then I can help you up close if you're struggling. Mm -hmm. The other aspect is any habit or new hobby that you want to try. When I teach life coaching, and this could be either, this could be applied to any part of your life. It doesn't have to be painting. Um, but anything new that you want to learn, you have to break it down in pieces. First of all, give yourself a little bit of grace. You're not mm -hmm. going to be perfect right away. And don't expect to be like putting an hour or two into painting every day if you've never painted before. Maybe start off with just committing to five minutes, you know, once a day or a, a half hour, two times a week. Like something obtainable and right. that's not going to stress you out. Because the minute you start to get stressed, that's when you don't want to do it anymore because it doesn't feel good. So I want you to feel good. So when I teach creative habit, it's let's start real small with something basic for a couple minutes and then we'll grow the amount of time you spend doing it and then we'll grow your skills because I don't want you to get stressed out like stressed out and then like already start quitting on yourself right. before you even climb the, any of the mountain like and there's no one way up a mountain everyone's journey is different I was not perfect when I started painting but I really liked it and I just kept going and you'll see yourself grow, but you got to commit to whatever it is that you're trying to learn. And that, and like I said, that's every part of your life. Like you just have to give yourself a little grace and mm. try not to like layer it on too thick too quickly so that it's not enjoyable. Right. Yeah. And I think a lot of that's also fear-based, right? So it's a matter of just recognizing what that fear is, which which, yeah. you know, I'm part of a coaching program as well, not as a coach, but I'm being coached, right? And yep. I think when it comes to fear in, in this particular, you know, uh, topic, and I think this this probably applies to everything, 
you know, the fear we feel when it's, when we think that we have to be good at something or, or like me for years, it's like, well, if I'm going to go do something, it's going to be perfect or else it's just not worth doing. Well, that's a horrible way to look at it, but it's, it's fear. It's and the fear itself is just resistance because, you know, we, we, we like who we are. We like the way we are in this moment, even if it's, we don't like it because yeah. it's what we know. Right. So, so I love it's that because by, change. like no one wants change. And right, I don't know right. why I'm the opposite of people for some odd reason. Change is always like thriving for me. I'm like, wow, well, let's see what exciting thing is going to happen from here. Cause this is definitely different. Um, but I like change. I think it's because I changed the narrative and that is what I like to do when I do the affirmation art and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I like to take people that are struggling from certain narratives because of ingrained, you know, learned behavior. Like say you were a child and you went into art class and your teacher said, you know, you're not good at drawing. So right. then the rest of your life, you're like, oh, well, I'm not good at it. Well, you form those thought patterns and in, right. in your neural pathways and you and like there's no way to stop it from naturally coming front of mind until you actually make a point to change it mm -hmm. so like when I start feeling afraid I'm like well how about we look at it as I'm excited yeah I love that yeah you know yeah, what I mean exactly. like flip right. our terminology change the narrative and I like to do that for anything that's trying like kind of holding me back Mm -hmm. Like, I'm like, all right, I got to figure out how to flip this narrative. And then I make an art piece out of it. And then I look at that art piece on a daily basis and I make sure I'm hanging it somewhere. So it stays front of mind mm -hmm. so that I can stay in that power, that energy that I'm trying to channel and manifest into my life. Yeah, that's that's I, I love that. I love the way you explain that. And that's really what I have myself been working on. I mean, I think I'm finding that. um by looking at what I'm trying to accomplish from a different perspective, trying to change those neural pathways or those neurotransmitters, which, which admittedly is difficult. I mean, it really is, you know, I'm what, 58 years old. And I, th I think when I was watching, um, you've got another interview that you have posted and you mentioned that, you know, you, you, you had taken some art classes during high school. And then it sounds to me like your career path after high school took you to the white collar world. And then you right. kind of, return back to the art world, right? Which, totally. which, <laughs> yeah, which is very parallel to mine because I took art classes in the eighties and then spent, you know, almost three and a half decades doing military work. And then wow. it's really the last three years that I've started to go back to that. Right. Um, yeah. That's a crazy change. <laughs> yeah, it really <laughs> so is. But, the, but the, too, though, like it comes out of nowhere. You're like, well, I think I'll just try this again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. One day, I think Christy and I was in Hawaii. We decided, um, or I, I don't know if it was both of us mutually, but I'm like, well, I think I'm going to sit in the backyard and paint. Well, where the heck did that come from? Well, I don't even know. It just popped into my head. And admittedly, it was not a good painting. It was like, ugh. <laughs> but, but it's important to me because I look at the painting and I can remember where I was, where I was sitting, nope. what I was looking at, how I was feeling, right? And I think that's kind of what you're saying when you you know, when you have changes or there might be some fear involved, painting it out, hanging it on your wall and then looking at it. I love that. Yeah. Absolutely I have to say that. my first painting was terrible. Mm. My coworker. So I ran the medical division of a staffing company mm -hmm. and she was in the accountant department and she took me for my birthday to a paint and sip. And I looked at her and I was like, I'm going to end up starting one of these businesses. And we laughed because we were a little, we were drinking. And having fun and my painting came out really bad and so it was a joke but i literally quit three months later and yeah. i was like bye bye, -bye. yeah well and i mean yeah that's i'm huge. going back to art now yeah that is huge and so, christine writes I, was, I was free i didn't have anyone tying me down and i didn't have my child or anything yet right. so if anything was going to happen it had to be like then when i wasn't really risking anyone else you know but, but that, but, but that's, that's, that's such a courageous thing to do. And there's so many people that are, that are afraid to take that kind of leap of faith, you know? So congratulations for that. I mean, that's amazing. Honestly, I just, I hope by sharing it, that people know that they can do it too. Like mm -hmm. if there's something you're feeling like tug to try and do, right. try and do it. I mean, you don't necessarily have to up and quit your whole job like I did, but like, you could dip your toe in it and see if it goes somewhere. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. 
Yeah, yeah, and it, and it may not go exactly the way you envision it right up front, but that doesn't mean it's not the right thing. I mean, if you're oh, that right. inspired to do it, right? Yeah. Um, it's Christine, not like it what, hasn't been a bumpy road. Like, it definitely didn't come easy, but like, it was fun and exciting. An attitude has a lot to do with it, too, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So Christine wrote, uh, I love your approach to fear and flipping the script. We could all use that same approach. And I definitely agree. I definitely agree. Totally. So, so the paint and sips, that's, um, well, you, you do, you don't call it that, right? Or is it that? Um, well, there's different companies. So everyone calls it different things. Mm -hmm. uh, my business is owned and not artistic services. So I just call them paint nights or paint and grays, like, cause I connect with other local places. So I have another one coming up this weekend. And it's at like a local place that's going to have like a whole bunch of like snacks and stuff for people to graze on mm -hmm. and it's fall themed. So we call that the paint and grace. So I name them all, whatever I feel like. I don't really <laughs> have like a set thing like everyone else. <laughs> just, right. Right. I don't know. I like to change things. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, that just shows your, your, you know, that, that idea of loving change, right? I mean, if it's different every time, it's going to be different every time. And there's a certain allure to that too. You know, it's like everybody, you know, it's like if you, not to bring work back up again, but if you're doing that same daily grind every day, you get into this. And I think the word people like to use is this rut because it's the same thing all the time. You drive the same way to work. You do the, you know, you pick up the same coffee in the morning, but all it's, all it takes sometimes is just one small change or one small pivot. And then you feel differently about what you're doing, yeah. you know, and, and you living in the Massachusetts area. Cause I used to have to drive to Boston every day. I mean, like, and I live in Drake it and that's about a, you know, as a crow flies, it's not that far, but you know, traffic in this area is horrendous. Right. Yeah. And, um, I, I actually appreciated the days that the 93 was so packed that I'd have to go the back roads. Yeah. You it's know what I mean? Cause the, route. yeah, it's funny. <laughs> it's just that one little, just, just changing things up actually made it. I mean, it might take me a little bit longer, but you get to see things along the way that, um, you might've missed if you hadn't taken it. Right. Yeah. You know. I mean, that's what I love about nature and stuff, too. Like, don't mm -hmm. you just love to go sit outside and just calmly look around for a little while and see what you can find? I live in this magical area, and I have all of these animals and stuff come to me all the time. And it's just, it's so inspiring. And it helps me, especially because with my crystal heart work thing that I do, which mm -hmm. we'll show you pictures, I'm sure, soon. Um, I'd like to intertwine animal totems with cr working with the energy of crystals. Okay. So when I'm doing it and I'm working or trying to at least channel the energy of the crystal, a lot of the time I'll sit outside and see what comes to me. Right. And um, it's been a really like amazing experience, like especially connecting more with nature and spending that time in more of an, a meditative state. So it's really raising my vibration and making my mm -hmm. moods much better. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've been I've been walking three times a day. And um, although I'm not combining art with that there is a certain, it's different. It's different when you're in nature, right? Uh, especially if you're, if you're open to it, instead of being closed, if you really open yourself up, you know, whether or not little animals come up and nibble at your toes or not, there's still something special about the trees, the leaves, you know, and as we move further into fall and, you know, we both know New England, uh, fall in New England is gorgeous. You know, as much as I hate, the, much as I hate the winter and I'm, I will admit it live, um, the fall in New England is absolutely spectacular. And, um, you know, to be able to sit back and just appreciate that is inspirational, right? And and very calming as well. Yeah. I actually really love our weather. I like the crazy weather. I even love the winter. I, I don't know. I just like it. I'm so strange. But like the cold, brisk air is mm -hmm. something. I don't know. I, maybe I was just like one of those kind of people that like likes the cold, I guess. I don't know. You, hot, yeah. though, so the cold feels good on me. <laughs> yeah, you you and Christine, yeah, you both are like that. So I say good for you. Me, I'd rather go where it's warm. But anyway, this isn't the way. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Um, yeah, um, if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to bring up uh, some of your paintings. There's there's sure. three different sets. If we could just bring them up. I'm, I'm really interested in talking. Well, I'm interested in talking about them all. Let's go ahead and bring them up. Yeah. So, so my pet portraits are something that I like to do. It's a service that I offer people more than most um it's a pet that's passed away mm -hmm. so these pets are really important to them and getting to recreate their photos um into a portrait that they get to hang on their wall um has always been really 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 like i don't know what the word is but 
powerful, I guess. Like, cause I get to connect with them and I get to see their face when I get to see right. it and just like hear the stories about the animals and stuff. And just, I love it. I love pets. I'm a very big animal person. So I just can't help myself. And I love that I can offer that to them, you know? Now, what uh, is this? Is this acrylic that you're using or oil or yep. what is the? I use all acrylic for mm -hmm. pretty much all of my paintings. Some of my other stuff I um, add in like other like mixed media stuff. But when it comes to the pet portraits, just acrylic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, these are these are absolutely gorgeous. We were talking right before we went live and I'm, I'm extremely impressed with these. I mean, I dabble in pet portraits as well. Not um, I think I've only got up on my wall. I've got one acrylic of our dog that passed Milkbone. Um, but my, my technique is a little bit different, Yeah, but, that's cool but it's though, everyone's different technique. Yeah. 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 And, and the thing is, is it's, you know, what, how you described, um, really the importance of capturing these, you know, I think a friend of mine used to call, uh, dogs specifically, a uh, little, what, how do you call it? Little, little human and furry coats or something like that. Cause they, there, there are, there are people. You know, we were talking about our stray that's now our cat who's not in the room right now, Fiona. But, you know, she's she's going she is a part of our household now. She's a little person in a furry coat. I'm just saying. <laughs> Absolutely. I've got two cats of my own uh, and I we, we adore them. So yeah. I hear you. OK. And this uh, what's this picture here? This is some. Um... So this is just some of the collection of the uh, the crystal heart work that I've been working with. So what I'm doing um, is I'm taking crystals because I have this ob obnoxious crystal collection at this point. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm, I'm running out of space <laughs> and I'll probably open a museum at some point. We'll see. Um, but so I, I pick um, a crystal and I try to channel the energy into the canvas and I create a background using acrylics and brush oak crystals and a bunch of combination of things and lots of layering. And I just put all of this love and energy into it and I try to just infuse it and then after I create the background I look at them for a while mm -hmm. and I try to figure out what animal or symbolic totem comes through um so the Buddha was um I connected with the diamonds and then like so I had the carnelian that lion one that's in there the lioness yeah that one was when I was going through a really hard time and I was I had to channel the energy of strength and like endurance. And I felt like the lioness just like came through staring at me and how perfect was that? So like, these are just cool paintings that I have created that I'm turning later into something else that I'm going to kind of make a book and like Oracle deck out of. Uh, you know what? That's funny. You should say that because that, that thought popped into my head before you even um, said anything. I'm super excited. So I'll sell prints and stuff, but then I'm going to have the book and the deck and they're going to have life coaching and meditative practices intertwined with crystal knowledge. And it's just going to be cool. I, I, that's spectacular. Christine says, love, love, love your artwork. And Lucinda Bentley, she, she's Thank been on our show a couple of times. Matter of fact, she's going to be on again in a few weeks. Uh, she says beautiful and she's uh, based out of Florida. So you got a Florida fan. Amazing. I have family in Florida. <laughs> nice. And then the final one are these small. Um, yeah. So paintings. remember when I was talking about how I like to do affirmation art? So this is like something we'll do with a group. And, and I purposely don't like make them fancy looking. I want them to look doable to the group that comes to the class. I don't want them to be intimidated and be like, well, I have to make that. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> right, right. Um, I kept them nice and simple. We use acrylic pens or cutouts from um, magazines and stencil work and just paint and stamp, do whatever you feel called to do. And then we put whatever we're trying to channel into our life in, a, in some sort of phrase and onto the canvas or paper or whatever we're using. It's pretty yeah. fun. Yeah, it sounds like it. it. Well, it looks like it. Yeah, I... um love the idea of well there's a couple things i love about what you're what you're speaking about today with me um you know from from the from the technical side the idea of combining mixed media right or 
um, or even using something as in inspiration, like with those, uh, not crystal paintings. What did you refer to them as? Not crystal paintings. Heartwork. <laughs> Heartwork. There we go. Sorry. Um, because I think it shows that, you know, when you, when you're trying to guide someone who might be living in the land of fear towards love, being able to combine different types of materials, whether or not it's paints or, you know, even markers like you showed there. Um, it, it, I think that it, it, it shows people that, you, that they can do that, that they can express their creativity and have it be meaningful. I mean, art, art doesn't necessarily need to be loved by the world. Yeah. I, I mean, I would argue that there's a lot of people that just can't stand the work of Picasso. They yeah. don't like that form, right? Um, so I think that's a beautiful thing that you're doing. And I yeah. also, and the other part of it, of course, is, you know, what you're doing, bringing people together for these, um, I'll use sip and, uh, sip and paint or whatever, um, even though that's not what we called it. But I, I usually like to say like community paint. Or something. Commu oh, I love that community paint. Right. Um, because mm -hmm. then you're bringing people together and now you're, you're, you have these group of folks that probably don't know each other, yep. generally speaking. And now they're all working towards this common goal. And honestly, you know, by the end, half the people end up talking to each other and being yeah. friends. I definitely make sure everybody laughs at least a few times because I'm I'm really busy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then like I just like to make sure I'm radiating as much love mm -hmm. and positivity and comfort so that people can relax and when you feel soothed and comfortable in your skin for a minute because like we spend all day on edge and trying to be perfect or look perfect and do all the right things. And this isn't about that. This isn't about you making a piece of art that looks just like mine. It's about you taking a break from having to be perfect and just laughing and spending time with other people and enjoying yourself. Like what's more beautiful than that? I just love it. Yeah. I don't think that there is. And, um, so, so when's your, when's your next event, um, for that? Oh boy, I have events. I think I have three this weekend. I'm, I'm, I'm deaf. I have a fundraiser on Friday night for hydrocephalus. If anyone mm -hmm. wants to come all are welcome. I think it's in Oxford. If you want info for me, you just ask no problem. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I think I have a private party Saturday, but Sunday is the paint and grace. I forgot what time that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, now do you, have you ever done any of this stuff virtually? Do you have that as a as an yes. option? Yeah. So I do have classes available for purchase on Teachable, mm -hmm. um, where you it's broken down step by step with videos. Um, I also was doing Zoom classes and have considered doing them again. Just haven't had the time lately, but right. it's definitely a possibility, especially like when I want to be more accessible to people that don't live in my area. Right. Amazing. Yeah, that's 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 incredible. Um that number one, you're so busy. That's cool. I mean, that's like really cool because that tells me that you have something that people really appreciate, right? And I have to say, like when you want to be an artist or self-employed, or especially in the creative business field in general, you you really need to make sure you have different streams of income. So by having not just events but commission paintings. Mm -hmm. And then doing other like speaking events or coaching, whatever, having your hand in so many things is the way I kind of keep balanced because sometimes, you know, if I'm failing in one, I need to lean on the other. Right. So that keeps me going. And like, 10 years strong, I mean, got to mean something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're doing something right. So, and, and I don't know if you know this or not, but we've already talked for half an hour. I knew, I knew this time was going to fly by. Um, I knew it. <laughs> yeah. So, so what's your, what's your website address? It's Odonata Artistic Services. Okay. <laughs> and that's spelled for, for those that are just listening and not watching. It's O-D-O-N-A-T-A, -A, Odonata Artistic Services.com. So if the folks, you know, at a minimum, at a minimum, I ask that you at least check out her website because she's got some of her pictures up there. Um, she's got the services that she offers. And if you're in the local Massachusetts, you know, New England area, um, what about email? Is there a, is there a contact form on the webpage as well? Oh yeah. Okay. Definitely. And it's just Odonata, Odonata by AS at gmail.com. 
Oh, perfect. Perfect. Nice um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I think if, if you get a chance, ch check out April. I think it's amazing. She's also got another podcast interview posted um, that goes into some other aspects and details of your life and things that you're doing. And there's also an article up there that was written by, uh, uh, what was it, uh, Boston? Yeah, the Boston Voyager. Boston Voyager. Yeah, that's also really an interesting read, folks. So if you get a chance, check it out. Um, April, I want to thank you so much for spending this time with me. I mean, this, and by the way, folks, I have never met April. This is our first meeting. And um, just, I, I just love it. So, so I appreciate you coming on the show and sharing uh, with hey, us. Hey, anytime. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So next week, folks, um, Christy Farisi, she is a retired uh, school teacher who is an artist, who is also a life coach, and she's going to be on next week. And in three weeks from now, um, I'm going to start advertising early April because this is going to be a cool event I got coming up. Um, but on the 10th of October at 6 p.m., I'm going to have on some former members of the Georgia Paranormal Society. And for an hour, we're going to talk the art of paranormal. How cool. <laughs> That's going to be a really cool one because I love that stuff. So anyway, so, yeah. So April, again, thank you very much. If you could hang on right, uh, right after the end of this, I'd appreciate that. In the meantime, folks, um, thank you so much for joining me. And I'll see you next week. Thank you so very much for joining me on the Art Talk podcast, where it's my goal to bring artists together to talk about their craft. If you'd like to join me for a conversation, please reach out via email at johncoleartist at gmail.com or by visiting my website at johnrobertcole.com. So until next time, keep crafting, painting, and inspiring others with your creativity. You make more of an impact than you know. See ya.